So hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Glad you guys are here. We're going to do another vlogger style video. Just kind of keep you guys uh, caught up on what's going on around here. Don't want anybody following behind. So anyway, uh, first thing we're going to do is we got to get that, that Jeep Liberty. Uh, you guys following along, you know we've got a Jeep Liberty down here in 05, 162,000 miles. And it's got a little bit of a transmission issue. It does have the five speed manual. But it likes to pop out of gear. It doesn't want to stay in first gear. So we're going to crawl underneath it, see if there's anything we can see wrong with it, uh, anything that we can address, whatever. Let's just get underneath it and check it out. Uh, after that, we're going to check out the uh, the 1996 Ford Taurus wagon. You guys, we have got a little cream puff down here, 77,000 miles. Uh, we're going to take a look at that one, take it out for a spin, see what we're working with. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. Oh, yeah. Also, we're going to be getting Randy from Auto Auction Rebuilds. He's got his 1959 Dodge Coronet. Uh, you guys have been following along, man. That is a great little car. Uh, we're going to do a little work to it. We need to get it down here first. We got to get a lot of things moved around so we can get that thing up in the shop. And we're going to do some rust repair on that one. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be in this video, but we'll definitely get it in the shop, get everything rearranged all of that get get ready to get started on that car i can't wait i'm kind of actually excited i like working on it i've worked on it a few times already and it's a lot of fun so anyway let's get everything moved around and let's see what we can get accomplished for today all right so we're underneath here checking the gear oil in this jeep and it's kind of i don't really feel anything so i'm going to try to put some in it and see if that does us any good i doubt it will but you never know I mean, I don't think it'll fix our issue, but it still needs to have oil in it. I mean, let's see if we can get some in there. All right, there we go. That's what we're wanting right there. You know, and to be honest, that's probably about all we're going to do to it is put the fluid in it, get it cleaned up. I've already been cleaning on the inside of it. She's cleaning up pretty good inside. You know, we got everything all cleaned up. The dash is all nice and clean. We got it vacuumed out. We got it wiped down. And that's probably about all we're going to do with it because that transmission, I'll tell you what. She's noisy. She makes a lot of noise. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but man, that's that just does not sound good at all. All right, check this out. I'm actually crawling underneath the car right now to show you guys all the damn noise this thing's making. So I'm crawling underneath here, got my light, and I just freaking happened to notice. Now I've been underneath here for a few minutes now, ch or checking that fluid and everything, topping it off. But I just now noticed this. Look at that. The damn transmission was about to fall out. That is supposed to be buttoned up tight right there. It's got a bolt missing there, another one missing up top. I'm gonna get it shut down right quick. I'm gonna get this shut down right quick and crawl underneath there and take a closer look. Good Lord. I can't believe I didn't notice that before, man. That's ridiculous. Let me get it jacked up a little bit better so I can show you guys a little easier. All right, so we got our jack stand in place. I'm not sure why this light keeps flickering like this. I think it has a loose connection. Anyway, yeah, check this out, man. What in the world? 
that is supposed to be tight there's not supposed to be a gap there there's actually a bolt missing right there and like i said another one up at the top that's gone as well hopefully y'all can see that let me get my light over here yeah look there's a bolt missing up top there You guys remember the PT Cruiser flip, man. If you guys missed that video, go check it out. We had a PT Cruiser that made that weird sound that this one's making, and it turned out to be a broken broken uh, flywheel on that one. I don't know what, what in the hell's going on in this one. Um, that's definitely not helping anything. I can promise you that. I want to see if I can get that tightened up, see if that does anything for it. I mean, I don't want to send it out of here like that, you know, no way I'm sending out of here like that. I mean, good grief. The transmission has got several bolts missing out of it. All right, so we're over here on the driver's side. And here's the starter. We're missing another bolt there. We're missing another bolt right here. The upper bolt up here, it, it's actually in there. But these two on this side are gone. Uh, and that's a starter bolt that's missing. And look at this. You're not even going to freaking believe this. Look. How the hell is that even working? I wonder if that's for the noises. Uh, I don't even know, man. This is crazy. But this transmission is, I think, got maybe two, maybe three bolts holding it in at this point. All right, so I managed to find a bolt that was a little bit too long, so I had to put some washers on it. But this is tightening t up together now, like it's supposed to be. A little bit more. See the gap went shut. I couldn't believe that was like that. Oh my god. Not cool. Now I'm starting to believe. Oh, hang on, my socket's falling off here. There we go. I'm starting to believe somebody had this transmission out, realized it was gonna be too expensive to fix. I don't know, something slammed it back together and didn't put all the bolts in it, just put just enough bolts in it, I guess. I don't know. And uh, send it off to the auction. That That's my theory so far. Uh, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. There's another bolt up top there that we need to replace. And then over there, I still need to put the starter bolt in. But I'm still looking. So let me go find another one. And I'll check back with you in a minute. go that was the starter bolt so now our, our starter is in there like it's supposed to be it's not going anywhere all right so i'm just kind of up here cleaning up a little bit on this clear coat man all the clear coats peeling off can you guys see that i mean oh it's, it's just really really bad so what i'm doing is is i'm working it down with some 600 grit sandpaper on my da i'm just wet sanding it uh check it out I've already been working on this side and I, like I said all I'm doing see how all this is really rough back here we're just knocking all that off of there you know from a distance when you're standing out here it looks fine it looks a hundred times better it won't be shiny once I do all that sanding as you can see but it wasn't shiny to begin with it was just peely and gross so I just trying to make it look better you know give it a little more curb appeal try to make it look like something besides a mess the rest of this looks fine i mean the hood is fine the uh the, the whole body all the way around the paint looks great there is no more clear coat peeling except for right up there now i just i just wanted to look better that's all because look when you walk up to this thing i hope you guys can see this I hope the lighting's right but when you walk up to it this is what you're seeing i mean just a bunch of it's just gross and it's rough it just feels terrible so anyway i'm getting that off of there right now it just takes a few minutes like i said just wet sanding Makes it nice and smooth. I'll go over this a little bit more, kind of smooth it up some. And then we'll get out here and wash it up. I might run a polisher over the hood. You know, just hit some key spots, make it look nice. You know, like I said, curb appeal. And then hopefully we'll get somebody in here that'll look at this thing and think, you know what? This thing's worth fixing. The miles are actually low for the age. The interior's in decent shape. It's clean. It just needs a, a transmission. In, in fact, these transmissions are actually pretty easy to uh, replace. It's just a matter of buying it. So like around 800 bucks, 
you could put a transmission in this thing you could do it out in the driveway on the weekend and have yourself a very nice little ride for under two grand easy so anyway that's kind of what we're doing here just clean it up a little bit and we'll move on to something else All right, so I decided just to go ahead and go over the whole roof. Well, we'll get it rinsed off here in just a minute. For now, I want to uh, skim over the hood with a buffer. I mean, that's a big panel. It, it, it'll it shine up nice because none of the clear coat's peeling off of this panel. So I want this to be nice and shiny. All right, we're using Meguiar's Mirror Glaze number nine. This is pretty fine, and that's what we want. Like I said, something that won't cause swirls, and this is actually a swirl remover. And really all we're doing is just kind of cleaning the surface, getting that clear coat, getting some of the, the hazy uh, residue off of it, things like that. We're not get, we're not really trying to use compound, anything aggressive on this surface. We just want to just polish it, basically. Now we weren't getting crazy on our speed or anything. We were only buffing probably around 900 RPMs on the buffer. Nice and slow. I didn't want to cook my polish onto the, onto the surface. And since we're not really trying to remove scratches, we're just really trying to get rid of haze, just quick and easy, just to kind of make it look better. Those extra RPMs just aren't necessary on this. So I keep my buffer relatively slow and you can see it works out just fine. Look at that. Now compare this side to this side. A lot shinier over here and that was almost effortless. I mean, that only took a minute. So I'm gonna finish up this hood. I might just go down the sides too. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, the sides look okay. They just need a good washing. So we'll probably just stick to the hood. I think we'll be fine that way. I think it's turning out great. Look at that, man. That hood looks nice. Of course, we got to give the headlights the weird beard treatment, right? So hey, we got the 96 Taurus wagon in here. You guys don't know, this car came from Auto Auction Rebuilds. Go check out his channel if you haven't heard of it. He picked this up out at the, uh, I believe it was the IAA Auto Auction, the, the insurance auction out there. Um, brand new paint job, man. There you go, Mako. We'll get it out in the sun here in a minute. Let's take a look at it. Right now, I just got the vacuum cleaner out and I'm in here just kind of going over it. This thing is super clean, man. I cannot believe how clean this is for its age. It's just, it's crazy clean. No stains, no rips, no tears, nothing excessive. Not, not at all. I mean, this is totally normal wear and tear at its best because, I mean, this is a car that really it should be a little dirtier. It should be a lot more worn and it's just not so basically just a, a good little once over with the vacuum cleaner and this thing will be good to go uh, let me unlock the door here yeah all the door locks work seats are nice and clean i mean check it out man i can't believe it look how clean the headliner is it's all in good shape None of it's fallen down, none of it's torn, stained at all, nothing. It's a non-smoker car. This is a one-owner car, by the way, for those of you who don't know. The glass opens. Now, these shocks are shot, but that's that's to be expected for sure. But look, man, it's got the little cover back here in the back, the seats that fold down. Check it out. There we go. Check it out, man. It's got the cover in here. Roll that up. 
got the third seat in the back here. Let's see if I can do this all one handed. There we go. Look at that, man. When's the last time you've seen that, right? That's awesome. But again, man, super clean. And the cool thing is, is those seats right there fold down too, man. So, I mean, you could haul more stuff in here than you could haul in a pickup truck just about. Get all this put back. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's, that's funny. Uh, somebody's on the way to look at the Jeep. And that's just kind of the way it goes, man. Every time you, you try to start on one thing, you got to stop and go do three others. That's just the way it goes, man. Any of you guys, you know, you wanting to get into this business, it's just that way. Just prepare for it. It's just how it goes. So anyway, we got the Jeep, man. She's all cleaned up, ready to go. Let's get this up there. Guy's on his way. He'll be here in a minute. So I've got to uh, go put my car selling shirt on. <laughs> all right, so I got my shirt changed. We're going to head on up the driveway, meet this guy. He's on his way. He should be here any minute. Now, keep in mind, for you guys that don't know, this thing's got some issues. It's an 05, 162,000 miles with the transmission. It won't stay in first gear. It pops out. You have, to, you have to just put a little pressure on the shifter, and it stays in just fine after that. I mean, just a little bit. Not, not much, but... Anyway, it's got that issue in it. That is going to affect the sale. So we are we got it priced cheap. I got it on there for uh, 1500 bucks, and uh, we'll see we'll see what they say, man. Maybe they'll take it. Get in here out of this heat, man. That AC does work good. It's about 95 degrees outside, and that AC's kicking great, man. Like I said, the rest of the vehicle's pretty decent. I mean, for any of you guys that might have missed it, we got her all cleaned up in here, and. This is this is what we're getting. This is it. What you see is what you get. So, all right. So obviously we're going to tell the customer about the issue. I mean, there's no hiding it. So, you know, we're going to be honest. Let them know. Hey, I'm not 100% sure what's wrong with this. Uh, I know we got a lot of comments on uh, on the video, and everything ranging from uh, throw out bearings to to uh, uh, synchros, shifting forks, clutch, you name it. But here's the thing, man. This thing is making a lot of racket. I mean, it's noisy. I don't know if you guys could hear it, just me out there standing next to it. This thing is very, the transmission makes some noise, so it's gonna need some work. Uh, I'm not doing it. I'm not spending the money on it. I'm just gonna sell it accordingly and let somebody else deal with it. And I mean, they, they could, might get in there, fix it for a few hundred bucks, I don't know. But anyway, other than that, the drivability of it's actually pretty good, I mean, you can see I just have to give it a little, just put it in, uh, look, I'm just, I'm barely holding that, look. I'm barely holding it. You see what I'm saying? So, I'm gonna get back on the road over here. Good Lord, I have to go off road. And, hey, it's a Jeep, it's all right, right? So anyway, look, I mean, you just barely hold it. It does fine. But as soon as you let off, it pops out. So, it's not that big of an issue. Um, a lot of times, like if you're in the city, you just take off in second gear, providing you're not on a hill or anything, I mean, you'd be fine. So anyway, drivability of this thing is still just fine. It's gotta be worth at least 1200 bucks, but we'll just have to wait and see. When it comes to these old used cars, they're worth whatever you can get somebody to pay for them. So hopefully we get somebody to come in here, give us a reasonable offer on it, and they can take it off our hands and they can go mess with it and probably still have a very nice, good running good shifting vehicle for well under two grand so whoever ends up in this they'll be doing just fine i promise you all righty y'all there goes the jeep patriot she's out of here we did 1250 on it she's fully aware of the gear shifter situations she doesn't mind one bit she actually found it quite easy to drive which i, I kind of felt the same way So anyway, there she goes. So all right, that's the end of the line for the Jeep. She's out of here. Like I said, 1250 on that one. Not a lot of money to be made on it, but we kind of knew that going into it. But it's all right, you know, we didn't really do much with it. Just kind of screw around. So anyway, she's gone, made a few hundred bucks on it. It's kind of how those deals go. But anyway, uh, now it's on to that, that Taurus wagon. I know some of you guys are interested to see what that thing goes for. We've got her posted at 1750. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. I haven't gotten very many hits on it just yet. So we may have to lower the price a little bit to get somebody out here. But, you know, we'll figure that out as we go. But for now, Jeep Liberty is gone. Hey, everybody, check it out. It's the middle of the friggin' night. We're down here at AAR headquarters. Got low love life out here. So we were having a little issue with the bleeding the brakes on here and we had to get a little creative with the uh, bleeding the master cylinder. Something I never tried before, 
but basically we just hooked up a uh this rubber line here to one of the bleeder valves ran it up over the fender into the reservoir and we bench bled that that uh master cylinder on the car i never tried that before i watched a youtube video about it and man it worked great didn't it dude that was epic it got the pedal right back almost instantly <laughs> Yeah, like immediately. Yeah, and I mean, you're trying everything to get a pedal before that, and it just was not working. And that simple little trick, man, awesome. YouTube does it again, man. <laughs> That's what YouTube's all about. That's man. what I think. Got us through this one. Brakes are working good now, man. We'll get it all thrown back together, and we'll move on to something else. See how loose that is? Yeah. There's got to be a. I wonder. I mean. So what engages on that? The front? Yeah, what what engages that? Is it like a pedal or something or a lever? Uh, it's a a regular e brake handle. Is there no adjustment on that end? That's what I was thinking. Is maybe there's a, but I don't see. There's nothing on yeah, this I don't end. See nothing either. I wonder if there's a bolt or something back here that tightens the cable. Actually, is that what that is? Ah, I bet it is. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, bet that's your adjustment right there. Can you see that? Holy crap. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Okay, you can I think they give you a little room to get to it there. What size does that look like? I right, swear so adjusting the e-brake now. What do you think? Think it's enough better. enough drag or will I tighten up a little more? Maybe just a tad bit okay. more. Yeah. Alrighty, let's get underneath here. Crank on it a few more turns. <laughs> Not turning this time, huh? That's, that's it. That's perfect, dude. Sweet, all right. So good, it killed the car. Yeah. Yeah, if it killed the motor. All right, we now have e-brake. Sweet. Ah. Awesome. Takes me back to 16 years old every time I smell that smell. Well, what do we got here? Got that old Dodge, the old 59 Dodge from Randy. Dropping it off. We're gonna do a little body work to it. Now that we got those brakes straightened out. Yeah, there it is. Well, she's purring. Listen to her. Man, it's hard to get that whole car in the in the frame all at once. <laughs> oh, what's up, man? We got her to 110. Really? Yeah. On those tires? <laughs> now this is virtually a rust-free car, with the exception of right here. It's got a little bit of rust starting to kind of bubble up under the surface. Not huge. It's not eight through at all. So that side will be super easy. But over here on the other side's another story. Uh, it's eight through. It's got some rod in it. Check it out. That's uh, that's pretty good. We're gonna have to definitely cut that out and replace it. It's in kind of a, a weird spot where it's it's curved. It's you know it's got a lot of compound curves and things like that in it, so it ought to be pretty interesting. But still, it doesn't look bad. I mean, not real bad. I think we can handle it. But before we start all that, we have got to get it in the shop. We, we, you know, we, we don't have a lot of room around here, and sometimes we have to play musical chairs with these cars, and today's no different. So let's get some of this stuff moved around. All right, so obviously we've got the transmission out of this thing. It's going to be a few days before we get another transmission, so as of now, this one's in the way. So we're going to start by getting this one out, and we'll probably put it over there where the other ones are parked. Uh, so before we do, let's get those out of the way. Let's go set them off in the shade somewhere, completely out of our hair. Get this one out and get the, the Dodge in here where it needs to be. All right, let's start with the Aveo. Let's get it out of the way, put it over in the shade. Um, those of you guys that don't know, a little update on the Aveo. We were having a little bit of an issue with it. It went into limp mode. Randy came by, oh, let me turn that down. Randy came by with his uh, Maxisys Elite scan tool. You guys, man, that thing is awesome. It does just about anything you could imagine. And uh, he was able to put this through the learn, the relearn process on the throttle body and uh, got the light to go off, got it out of limp mode. She's been doing good ever since. Uh, when it first went into limp mode, I was able to hook my scanner to it, 
kick it out of limp mode, shut the, the engine light off, and away we went, and it, it did fine for like a whole other day or so. The next day we came out, it went back into limp mode, and I couldn't get it to come out this time. Here's the scanner that I use, and uh, it works great. I mean, it does a lot of things. I've never had an issue with it not turning the engine light off, but on this one, it just wouldn't do it after that second time. So I'm starting to think there probably is something wrong with that, that, uh, that TPS. It, it throws up a P2135 code, which is a TPS sensor code. Unfortunately on these, the, the TPS and the throttle body are all made together in one unit. You can't replace the, the TPS by itself. Kind of pricey. I heard you might could get one around a hundred dollars offline but then i gotta wait for shipping and i just don't have that kind of time uh, we've had this one long enough it's time to send it on down the road so we're probably going to end up down at lkq see if we can't source a, a good used one we'll swap it out uh randy has uh volunteered to come through redo the relearn process if need be and uh away she'll go so we're not going to send it out with an issue i am going to drive it around a little bit and see what happens see if by chance maybe we did fix it I, i'm not too optimistic on that so we will probably have to go through that relearn process and we will probably have to replace that that throttle body so anyway but hey we've got like 2,000 miles on this thing can you believe that when we first picked it up we had just over 115,000 miles we're over 117 now With the exception of this latest little issue, those were complete trouble-free miles. This thing has had zero issues, so I don't know, man. I thought maybe I could get in there and clean out that throttle body, and maybe that would fix it, but I, I went in, and it's not even dirty, so I mean, normally they have some black cart and you know, just stuff built up on it, and this thing was clean, so I don't know, man. It might just need to be replaced. This may have been a previous issue the other owner had. All right, yeah, that's a good spot for that, over in the shade. All right, next up, let's get the old wagon out of the way. This is the 96 wagon. Get in here and do a cold start on this one. It's been sitting for a few days. There we go. Fire right up, not even an issue at all. Let's get this AC going full blast. It's about 95, 96 today, high humidity. AC is a must and AC and this thing works really good and check out how clean it is in here This is a great little ride All righty, all right, that's a good spot for that one. Let's get this other one moved now All right, we're gonna use the OF 150 today this to fire up we'll use this to uh, pull that old Chevy out of there find the right key let's see man I tell you what the car business I got too many keys there we go all righty not bad fired right up it's time for some power steering fluid All right, got everything out of the way. Let's get this old girl up in the shop finally. This will be a cold start. It's been sitting overnight since Randy Randy dropped it off, so this technically considered a cold start, even though it's what ninety five degrees outside. But whatever.
All right, so we got that in there where we need it. I'm trying to get everything right where I want it because it looks like it's about to rain. I mean, it can't make up its mind whether it wants to or not. It's actually kind of sprinkling right now. So I wanted this to be in the shop already. That way, if it does pour down rain, we'll be in there dry. It won't matter. We could just keep going doing what we need to do. So anyway, there's that. All right, we'll get the old F-150 parked back where it goes and we'll be done with the musical chairs we got going on here getting everything all moved around i'm gonna have to get some power steering fluid in this thing all right so we got that done just in time because it is raining check it out raining and sun shining at the same time you gotta love it so anyway we got all that rearranged now i've got a, a pretty important errand i gotta go run and i thought that would be a perfect time to uh, check out the old taurus wagon the 96 taurus wagon came from iaa auto auction and uh she's got 77,000 miles on it i mean who would ever thought a 96 would have that such few miles but man this thing is running great so let's go drive it see how she does okay so we made it to the city no issues at all man this car is doing really great very impressed with it uh we're up here picking up my cat man we're at the vet veterinarian clinic cat took a spill man <laughs> let's get in here and check him out make sure he's all right what are you doing tonys <laughs> man i'm glad he did good in there yeah three thousand friggin dollars can you believe that i can't believe it i never I didn't think there was enough leg there to be worth three thousand dollars to be honest with you but especially when you consider they only operated on a little small piece of it <laughs> but what i guess we're in the wrong business i don't know man anyway they got him put back together he's doing good now we're going to get him to the house and uh make sure that he doesn't jump off of anything anymore all right so we made it home Taurus did great man that that's a great car man whoever gets that car is going to get a really nice car for really cheap so cool deal um i gotta run another errand i gotta run up and get some gas in this can for the pressure washer and the lawnmower and uh, i think this would be a really good time to try out the aveo see if it's going to go into limp mode again so let's do that next get that in there let's go all right, so I went ahead and plugged in my scanner and got it all set up. I figured that way, you know, if it goes into limp mode, maybe we can just reset it and uh, continue on our way because we're kind of out here a ways away from everything. For those of you guys that don't know, we're in the country, you know, and the nearest store could be, you know, a 10 mile round trip. So definitely don't want to be breaking down and going into limp mode. So let's see how she does. Well, we made it back, no issues. Didn't go into limp mode, the light didn't come back on. I don't know, maybe it's fixed. I, I'd hate to send it out of here like that, so we probably will just go ahead and just replace that throttle body. So if we do decide to go out to the salvage yard, I'll be sure and bring you guys along with me. So anyway, we'll, we'll just wait and see, I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna drive it a little bit more tomorrow first. But hey, that's for another video. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here, you guys. Video's getting kind of long. I'm gonna do some vlogger style videos. You know, I've seen other guys do it. It seems to work out for them. And uh, I think it will help me get videos out faster because, you know, the, those videos aren't quite, there's not so much editing involved. It's just a little bit more of my day-to-day -day things that I gotta go through. And uh, I'll be able to get that out to you guys a lot faster than my usual video format, which can take a little bit of time to put together. Uh, between that, faster internet that we've got on the way. We've got high-speed internet coming. They finally got my town wired up. I can't wait to get that going. Uh, between that and the vlogger style, I think we can start getting videos 
cranking out for you guys, man. I'd love to put out a video at least every other day. I think that would help the channel grow. And as the channel grows, we get to put out better content. It's a win-win for everybody. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here for now. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, my Instagram, link in the description. Uh, also, hit up my Facebook, uh, Weird Beard on Facebook. Send me a frame request. I will accept your frame request. But anyway, I'm out of here for now. I'll see you guys real soon. Later.